Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Good evening. Residents in three states are cleaning up after wild weather overnight. In southeast Queensland, about 20,000 homes and businesses lost power and some were badly damaged. The storm was short but powerful as it swept across southeast Queensland. Strong winds slammed Toowoomba, Delby and the Gold Coast with minor damage across a wide area. The wind gusts snapped trees and power lines and tore towers from some roofs. Kapira were one of the worst hit suburbs in Brisbane. This resident was stunned by the force he was faced with. I've been through a tornado years ago, a genuine one, and the wind force felt like a tornado, but well, I'm not saying it was. It just had that real strong push against the house. Wind gusts hit 75 kilometres an hour. The state emergency service received more than 50 calls for help, mainly for leaky roofs and fallen trees. It's the first storm for the season and it is a good reminder for residents to be storm ready, with the Bureau expecting more storms throughout the summer. We might be in for a fairly active storm season and that's because uh, we're not expecting either a strong La Nina or an El Nino and when we get that type of uh, set up, uh, we often tend to get a very active storm season. Strong thunderstorms also hit New South Wales and Victoria, with this truck sliding in the wet weather and ploughing off the road. Shops were badly damaged in Sydney as an awning collapsed and now won't be open for some time as the owners wait for insurance assessment. SES workers fear it's a preview of what's to come with constantly changing weather patterns. Jacinta Lal, QT News. Queensland schools will soon provide for the needs of homosexual and transgender students to stop bullying and discrimination. The Education Minister believes they may even need unisex toilets and mixed sporting teams. The government wants to increase support for minority groups such as transgender, homosexual and intersex students. It believes this can be achieved with better changing rooms, toilet facilities and mixed sporting teams. The draft policy also encourages staff to address the students by their preferred gender. It will give children who are trans um, a real head start with their education and it will also relieve a lot of the pressure from parents. Currently there are few guidelines on how schools are expected to cater to these students, making it difficult for teachers and staff. I think it's, it's vital that we acknowledge uh, that we have a huge diversity of uh, students in our schools and that we are consciously looking out to protect their best interests of each and every student. The Department of Education hasn't said if schools without homosexual, transgender or intersex students have to adopt these guidelines. While there is a lot of group and individual support for these children in the education system, a policy that sets a standard and well-considered set of guidelines could make the world of difference for these students. In the past, many students with identity issues have been just sent to the disabled toilets. Yeah, I think uh, they should give support and that's good. Transgender students, just like any other students that are of a minority, should not be discriminated against. Celeste Skinner, QT News. The fallout continued today after Prime Minister-elect Tony Abbott's choice to appoint just one woman to his front bench. Julie Bishop will be the only woman in Cabinet and one of just six in the 42-strong ministry, but she's dismissed claims she's the token woman. The new Cabinet will place Australia 42nd in the world for the number of women in the lower House of Parliament. These rankings leave Tony Abbott in a familiar line of attack, despite many recent efforts that have seen him try to improve his image with women. Watching the election campaign coverage, uh, I thought Tony Abbott's daughters would end up cabinet ministers. As expected, Julie Bishop has been appointed foreign minister and is the only woman to be named to Mr Abbott's front bench. The lineup has attracted claims Mr Abbott is out of touch with contemporary Australia, causing concern about the new government. However, his cabinet has some supporters, with arguments that more women in the front bench does not necessarily equal good government. If you ask me, would I like something like the Gillard government with lots of women that was hopeless or a good government with a few less women, I'd choose the good government. When asked about the lack of female appointees, Mr Abbott says he envisaged that changing. He says he expects to see more women in Parliament as time goes by. Mr Abbott is expected to be formally sworn in as Prime Minister tomorrow. Helena Webb, QUT News. 
After 21 years, Queensland Police are renewing a double murder investigation known as the Rock Case. Police believe new technology may help in tracking down a dangerous suspect they believe is now living in Queensland. Queensland Police today launched a fresh approach into the 1991 murder of Peter Wade and Maureen Ambrose. The pair were shot by two gunmen in their Surfers Paradise apartment. One suspect, Ronald Thomas, was charged with a double life term. However, a secondary man, John Victor Borbach, was never located. Now, modern photographic software allows detectives to create images of how Bobak would look now. To look at the age progression photographs, and we're appealing for public information. I'm of the belief that um, he will clearly resemble one of those four photographs. With the investigation still open after 21 years, police are calling for the public's assistance in hunting down the gunmen. Police believe that Bobak now lives in Queensland or northern New South Wales. Mr Bobak would now in fact be 63 years of age. Um, but there are features of Mr Bobak that will not change through the passing of time and they include quite a prominent nose that he has and also the fact that he is heavily tattooed. Underworld rumours have suggested that Bobak himself may have been murdered. However, investigator Heinmarsh says that there have been sightings of the gunman within Queensland in recent years. Police are offering a reward of $25,000 to anyone with information leading to Bobak's arrest. Contact Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. Gabrielle Lyons, QUT News. Bruce and Denise Morecambe have been honoured again for their work in keeping children safe. The Governor, Penelope Wensley, presented them and 21 other Queenslanders with awards today. They came from a wide cross-section of Queensland life to be honoured for their contribution to society. They had a few things in common, a willingness to help in their community and they were nominated by others in their local areas. Bruce and Denise Morecambe once again have been applauded for their work with the Daniel Morecambe Foundation following his disappearance and murder. Both Bruce and Denise believe others are just as deserving. And Bruce and I always say it's not just us that's received the award, it's for all the work that everybody's helped us with with the Foundation over the last eight years or so. Dr Colin Dillon also received honours today for his significant contribution to Queensland Indigenous community. It certainly is a great honour for me and uh, I just stop and think that uh, one is so fortunate to receive such a prestigious award. He has also been acknowledged before. It was a day of recognition and praise for many of those who work in our community. The Governor will be holding a similar ceremony tomorrow. Georgia Terry, QUT News. Now to sports news and in Australian rules, Geelong forward Paul Chapman will miss Friday night's blockbuster preliminary final against Hawthorne. Chapman accepted the one-match ban for bumping Robbie Gray following last Friday night's game against Port Adelaide. Chapman could have contested the charge, but if he lost, he would have been out for two matches. Cats fans now hope he will be available for the grand final if his team wins against the Hawks this Friday night. While the one-game suspension is bad news for Geelong, their opponents have had good news. Hawthorne's Cyril Rioli is set to play on Friday after an injury. In today's training session, the Hawks star played strongly and showed no signs of the ankle problem which sidelined him in round 22. Hawthorne's Lance Franklin has also returned to training after his one-match suspension. In other AFL news, the All-Australian team has been announced, with Gary Ablett setting a new record. The Gold Coast Sun star is in the team for the seventh time. But 12 other players are in the side for the first time and Geelong's Joel Selwood has been named as their captain. Amelia Bray, QUT News. Time now for a look at the weather. Temperatures in the southeast today have been a little warmer with 29 degrees in Brisbane, 17 to 28 for the Sunshine Coast. The Gold Coast had 17 to 25 degrees and Ipswich had a top of 30. Around the nation tomorrow and Sydney can expect a partly cloudy day, 25 degrees. 7 to 18 degrees for Canberra with a morning shower or two. Melbourne can expect a shower or two, 13 to 20 degrees. Showers two for Perth, reaching 20 degrees. The forecast for Queensland and Longreach can expect a clear day tomorrow, 36 degrees. Mackay will reach 30 degrees, partly cloudy there. 18 to 33 degrees for Rockhampton with a possible shower and 16 to 29 degrees for Bundaberg. Mostly fine with a possible shower. The outlook for Brisbane tomorrow is for a fine and sunny day, topping 29 degrees.
Mostly sunny with a possible shower for Thursday, 32 degrees and 14 to 27 degrees for Friday. Fine and mostly sunny. That brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for now. We'll be back tomorrow with more QUT news. Goodbye. Goodbye.